Good morning, everyone. It is 8.15 a.m. and I am about to do my makeup and get ready for the day. So I thought that I would sit down and turn on my camera and film it for you. Um, I know I've been gone from YouTube forever and you guys have been asking me if I'm gonna relaunch my channel, if I'll do tutorials, can I have an eye makeup tutorial, a skin tutorial. So here I am. So I'm right in front of my bed here um, and I just woke up. So excuse me if I'm still a little groggy, but let's go ahead and do our makeup together. I have some really fun new stuff I wanna show you guys and I'm not sure what look I'm gonna do today, but I think it'll just be something pretty standard for me. I like to do like um, a neutral, soft, smoky eye for the daytime most days. And then um, I'll show you some foundation that I just came out with and some other fun products and brushes that I'm into. So the first thing I'm gonna do is moisturize my lips. And I always like to do this before I get into my makeup just because by the time I get to my lips at the end, I want them to be hydrated. So um, I'm using this shea butter. It's by L'Occitane and I like it because it's organic and it comes in this huge tub and I literally have these like all over my house. I have one by my bed there, I've got one downstairs in my beauty room, I've got one in the bathroom, I've got one in our kitchen. So I mean I use this on my lips but I also use it like on my cuticles, on my body, on my knees, on my elbows. Um, if I really, really feel dry anywhere on my face, like under my eyes, I love using it as an eye cream. Uh, and shea butter is non-comedogenic, so it's like thick and hydrating, but I never feel like it's gonna break me out like a really heavy cream. So, oh, and I'll show you, I um, moisturized already. I'm not using a primer today, and I don't use tons of primers. I'm not a fan of the silicone-based primers. I don't like silicone on my skin. Um, you know when you put them on and it feels really silky and soft on your skin? That's not your skin. That's like the coating that the silicone puts over your skin and it's supposed to like fill your pores and blur out your texture, but it basically just clogged your pores because it traps all your oils and dirt and pollution and toxins in your skin throughout the day. And I just don't like that feeling of that extra like film on my face. So I haven't really been priming, but I do like to go in with a really nice moisturizer that's heavy and hydrating because I am on the drier side, but that's also gonna absorb so that makeup will lay smoothly on top and not like slide around on this layer of oily, greasy moisturizer. So I've been loving this Indie Lee Squalene Cream. It's like super duper hydrating. It's all natural. Um, I think I got it at Nordstrom, but it sinks in while still hydrating my face and getting rid of any flaky dry patches. And um, right now, it's that time of the month. Lucky me. And I've got some redness going on. Um, I've got some mild, mild like breakouts. And my skin's just generally a little more dull and dry. So I've been loving this moisturizer for the last couple of months, um, especially like when my skin's problematic. So now that my face is moisturized, my lips are hydrated, we can go in with our foundation. So I have something to show you guys that I'm really excited about. It just launched and it is my newest product. So if you guys don't know yet um, why I've been gone from YouTube and blogging and just not really um, on social media creating content other than Instagram for the last like year is because I launched a makeup line. So it's completely clean, natural cosmetics, and I did this because I, I'm really into health and wellness, as you guys probably know. I had an organic juice company, and I've had like really bad eczema my entire life, and I basically cured it through my diet and nutrition, so health and wellness has always been like a really big fascination for me. And I kind of felt like I was putting all these like chemical products on my skin, every day while doing my makeup, but I'm so conscious of all these other things I do in my life and what I eat and how much water I drink and what I think and you know, I do yoga and I meditate. And then I was slapping all these like chemical cosmetics on my skin. So I decided that I would switch to all completely clean makeup. And when I tried everything, I felt like it just kind of sucked. Like I bought every natural brand you could think of. Um, 
And a, a lot of them, while they claim to be natural and some of them are natural and they have better ingredients, some of them aren't great. Like I still found a lot of silicones in products. I was still finding synthetic fragrances and all these things that were still in a lot of these natural products. And then the ones that were truly natural were really sheer coverage, not that pigmented, not long wearing, and just generally kind of sucked. So I figured, you know, if I'm looking for natural cosmetics and I can't find anything that I love, there has to be a lot of other girls out there that feel the same way as me, that want cleaner cosmetics but want it to work and be just as good as all the brands that we love and use. And I feel like makeup has gotten to a place where everything is so good that you can't come out with shitty products and expect people to switch over and use them. They have to actually work and be really bomb. So yeah, that's how I formulated Lawless. I wanted to have really clean cosmetics, but have clean just be this benefit to the brand and not the main focal point and like ride on the fact that it's clean as an excuse for things being not pigmented, really sheer, um, not full coverage, you know. Lot, not long wearing, slide off your face, super greasy. So that's where we are now. Um, Lawless launched in October and I have liquid lipsticks out and this is my second product that I just released and it's called Woke Up Like This Foundation. This is a full coverage, um, super duper like good for your skin formula. There's no silicones, no synthetic fragrance, no parabens, no PEGs, no phthalates, no mineral oil. It's non-comedogenic. So I really love full coverage foundations and I pretty much wear full coverage every day. But one issue I've been having as I'm getting older, and I'm not saying I'm old, but I turned 30 in October and I feel like just little things I'm noticing. like. A matte finish really accentuates and sinks into like little fine lines around my eyes that I never knew I had, my smile lines. Um, so I wanted a dewy finish or radiant finish, but I also wanted it to be full coverage. And I feel like a lot of the full coverage foundations on the market are matte. And a matte finish just doesn't flatter me anymore. I like to have a glowy, dewy, skin-like finish to my makeup. And I would almost rather look a little bit oily throughout the day than dry and matte. So that's what this is. It comes in 20 shades. Um, my shade and the shade I'm going to use today is Arizona. Um, if I'm like tanner, I'll use warmth. Um, if I'm not as tan, I'll use golden. Um, as you guys can see, my face is definitely lighter than my body. Um, I never put my face in the sun. I'm not huge on sunscreen because I think that it has a lot of chemicals in it, but I just avoid the sun on my face. So, and I exfoliate a lot. So I typically, when I use foundation, I like to match my face to my neck because my body is so much darker than my face. And I exfoliate my skin a lot on my face. I don't put my face in the sun. So it's always generally lighter, but if I try to match my face, it will just look crazy because then it's gonna be lighter blending down into my neck. So I always match my neck with foundations and I definitely encourage you if you're shopping for a foundation, um, try to swatch on your neck. I wouldn't even do the inside of your arm because that's generally lighter too. And matching your face where we have a lot of pigmentation and redness and different you know, lightness in certain areas isn't always the most accurate. And ultimately you want your foundation to blend seamlessly from your face into your body. So I'm just gonna put a couple of pumps on the back of my hand here. And then what I like to do to avoid like my beauty sponge from soaking up all of my foundation is I like to take a flat foundation brush. This one is a Sigma F60 and I just like to place it on my skin so that it can get an even layer before I go in with my beauty sponge and blend it out. I just realized that I don't have a mirror down here. So I'm using the viewfinder and um, I can't see that great. It's like a tiny, tiny little screen. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get a mirror, much better. Okay, there we go. So if I'm looking down here, it's because my mirror's down here. Um, so I just like to get an even layer of that over my skin. And as you guys can see, this color blends really well into my neck. And then I'm gonna take a damp beauty sponge. Um, I usually use a beauty blender. I have no idea what brand this is. I just had it in my beauty cabinet, but um, it's damp and it's clean. I always like to 
make sure I clean my beauty blenders before using them. I think that sponges breed so much more bacteria than brushes, so always making sure that you clean your beauty blender before you use it every single time is really important for keeping your skin clear and avoiding bacteria. So I'm just gonna pounce that into my skin. And because this is such a full coverage formula, you really don't need to use a ton. Like, going in with a thin layer is where I like to start, and then if I want more coverage, I'll go through and build it up in the areas that I need more coverage, or I will add a full um, layer over my skin and just build upon itself. But I'd rather start with less, because you can always add more than apply too much and end up having to blend out a thick, cakey layer of foundation. I can't tell you guys how happy I am to be filming. Um, I really missed you guys. I really love being on YouTube because I feel like I can connect with you better than any other place. Because we can just sit down and like chat and I can get ready with you. I've really missed it. I, I'm curious what you guys are up to, how you've been, what's going on with you. And I'm also really curious as I restart my channel, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see more tutorials? Do you want me to do nicer videos with like full lighting and backdrops or do you like these casual, you know, sit down, get ready with me is chatty style? Um, let me know. Cause I wanna, I wanna create content that you guys wanna see. And so I feel like I haven't been on here for so long. I don't really know what you wanna see. So let me know. So as you guys can see, I kind of have a really nice even layer of foundation over my skin and it still has this nice radiance to it so I don't look like I'm too matted out or too cakey or too makeup-y which I love so that's the finish that I really go for when I'm doing my base products and it just evened out my skin tone so well while still making my skin look like skin so now I'm gonna go ahead and conceal and I've been trying in the last like year to switch over to completely cruelty-free products and it's been really um, fun because I've discovered so many new products that I like but it's also difficult because a lot of the things I was using I realized weren't cruelty-free and like my old favorite NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer um, is now no longer cruelty-free. NARS decided to sell in China so they were cruelty-free and now they're not so I've played with a few new foundation or er, concealers and I found one I love. So this is the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer and it like has medium to full coverage but I like that it looks um, skin-like. I was using the Tarte Shape Tape for a little bit and that's just way too dry and like heavy on my skin and it kind of makes my under eyes look crazy. This is like a really beautiful hydrating concealer and I like to just go in down the center of my face. I'm using the shade Light Medium. This is Light Medium. And I always go a little lighter with my concealer to highlight the center of my face and really brighten. And right now, I do have this redness around my mouth, so I'll take all the concealer I can get. I like to just go on my chin, and then I like to kind of reverse contour and just go near my mouth here to help lift this area. And then I have a little blemish right here. So just help it out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my damp sponge again, and I'm just gonna blend this out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and conceal my under eyes, and I haven't been using an eye primer lately. I've just been putting concealer on my eyelids, and I find that that works really, really well, and it just kind of like cuts out an extra step. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, apply the concealer to my under eye, and then to my eyelids. My husband um, had to catch a flight early this morning for a meeting up north in Sacramento, and like I'm so happy that he did because I cannot film with people like home. It's so awkward like talking to myself in the camera and like knowing that I'm being listened to or like that he could walk in and I'm like 
wonder if there will ever be a day that I'm comfortable filming in front of him, but I don't, I don't think so. So now I'm just blending this under my eyes. And I just love this concealer. It's so lightweight and just, it's not full coverage, I will say that. But I don't mind that. There's sometimes I really want full coverage, like if I'm going out at night, but just for the daytime, I think something like this wears beautifully and it still has that like hydrating, dewier finish that I really love. Okay, so now I'm gonna set my concealer in place so that it doesn't crease. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my Damp Beauty sponge and dip it into some translucent powder. And the reason I like to use my Damp Beauty sponge is so I can really press the powder into the skin. And something about the dampness of the sponge just really like makes the powder melt versus sitting on top of your skin and looking powdery. So I've been loving this method and I've been doing this pretty much religiously. Um, and I'm gonna bake today. So I'm, I, I lightly bake most days. I know baking can be really heavy and some people are freaked out to try baking, but I swear it's the, it's the most foolproof way to lock your makeup in. It's putting a lot of powder on your areas of wet product. So for me, it's my concealer. And then let it sit and your body temperature essentially cooks the powder and your pores open up and it really sinks into the skin. And then you dust away the excess and your makeup is locked in place all day. And I've also found it really prevents creasing on me. So like right here in my smile lines throughout the day, if I bake, it looks infinitely better by the end of the day than it would if I didn't. So I've been loving baking and I'm gonna use this powder. I know this is so effing annoying, but this is something I'm working on so I can't tell you about it, but I'm gonna use it to bake. And I'm just gonna take my damp beauty sponge and I'm just going to um, go ahead and make sure that nothing's creased yet because if you set your creases in place, they will be there all day. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bake under my eyes. And I like to look up while I'm doing this to make sure that I have no creasing. So the other great thing about baking is all of this powder under your eyes is going to catch your eyeshadow fallout. And then I'm just gonna bake around the sides of my nose, my laugh lines, and my chin. And then I'm gonna bake my forehead and lightly down the center of my nose. And then I'm going to make sure my eyelids aren't creased and go ahead and just not really bake there but just dust some powder over so that all of my eyeshadows have something smooth to blend onto. Because if you go in on wet concealer with your eyeshadow, it will catch and be really difficult to blend out. So now that I'm looking crazy, we're gonna go ahead and do eyeshadow. So just let this sit here and bake. I know it looks psycho, but it works. So I think I'm gonna use, um, I have two palettes here and Okay, so this one is my favorite. We just have a moment for this. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette. And I mean, can you tell I'm obsessed with this palette? I love her. I mean, I've used this palette so, so much. And this is my second one. So I love the tones in this palette. I think it's got this beautiful orange, these very rich red shades, these neutral transition shades, a really nice champagne gold shimmer, I completely hit pan on this white shade that just kind of sets your lid um, primer or concealer down. I love this uh, brown cypress umber shade. So I love this palette. I may dip into this a little bit, but I wanna try um, the new Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. And I've been playing with this and swatching it and I think it's gorgeous. So I really recommend a palette like this for an everyday palette because it has a black, it has a cream, it's got some really beautiful transition shades, some beautiful warm and neutral browns, some shimmers, this gorgeous mulberry shade. Ugh, I die for this shade. We'll definitely have to use that today. So I wanna play with this. So I'm first gonna take just like a fluffy eyeshadow brush and go in with this tempera shade just to create a uniform base color on my lid so that all the other shadows really have something to pop on top of. If you hadn't put powder on your lids yet, this is a good time to set it with like a cream or white shade so that um, your concealer is fully set and that there's nothing wet. And then I'm gonna go in with just like a fluffy sort of rounded brush and I'm gonna use this shade Orange Soda and mix with a little bit of Burnt Orange for my transition shade. And the point of a transition shade is really to um, 
help all of the shadows blend out easier between your lid and your brow bone so that there's a gradient and they just all have something to blend up into. So transition shades should really only be like a couple shades darker than your skin tone and it's really not meant to have a huge impact or show up too much. It's really just meant to help all the other shadows you're gonna put on after blend out easier. And I like to just go in windshield wiper motions and then tiny circles. And notice I'm holding my brush towards the end of the ferrule. You never wanna hold it like this. Oh! You never wanna hold it like this because it's too um, close to the bristles and it gives you too much control where you can go in with way too much pressure. You wanna use light pressure, hold the brush back here and just flick it in windshield wiper motions. And then I like to go into circular motions and just build that color up until you feel like you have a good transition. Okay, so now we've got that transition. I'm happy with the intensity that we've got. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush that's got a little bit more of like a taper to it. And I'm just going, this is really gonna help me get like right into the crease there. And I'm going to take this sienna shade right here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that on the brush, tap off the excess and go right here on the outer corner, up into the crease, and then drag the excess through all the way to the inner corner. And this is just gonna go right over that transition shade, those transition shades, but it's going to go slightly lower. And don't worry if you drag it onto the lid because we're gonna cover that up with shimmer. And then I'm gonna go back in with that original fluffy brush for, that we used for the transition shades and just mix those colors together and make sure we have no harsh lines. I love this sienna shade. And I'm pretty sure that you can get that in a single. Actually, you can get orange soda in a single too. Um, and burnt orange. So a lot of these shades are available in singles if you don't want the whole palette. Um, but it's probably more cost effective to get the palette. So next I'm going to take this smaller more dense fluffy brush and I'm gonna go in with this mulberry shade. I think this might be my favorite shade in the whole palette. Hold on, someone's here. Okay, sorry, that was UPS. <sighs> Scared me. You guys know I can't film with people around. Where was I? I was going to put this mulberry shade into that my outer V and sort of into the crease to really create depth. I think this might be my favorite shade in the palette. I just love how red and deep and rich. It's like a gorgeous burgundy wine shade, but it's super wearable. It's not like a stark, stark red. So I'm just gonna take this brush and dip it into this mulberry shade and tap off the excess. And then I'm just going to go into my outer lid and start to build up that V shape. And then I'm gonna drag any excess slightly in. So I guess I haven't seen you guys since I got married. I got married in September and we did it in Italy, which was amazing. I was like really stressed that summer before because I was doing all of the stuff for Lawless Beauty, like planning the products and launch and branding and packaging and then planning the wedding in Italy was like obviously way more logistically um, involved than like doing a wedding at home. But I have to say, now that it's done, I would do it all over again. It was the most amazing experience of my life and being away from home in this beautiful place with all of your closest friends and family just creates these lasting memories that is so so special um so if you're ever um considering a destination wedding and you're a little bit concerned about the planning process and the logistics i'm i'm telling you for me it was all worth it and i would totally do it again okay so now that we've got this shade built up, I'm going to go in with this MAC 217S brush. Um, MAC recently transitioned all their brushes to synthetic hair, so that's um, really, really nice. And this is a clean brush, or mostly clean. And I'm just going to buff out those edges so that there's no harsh lines. And you always wanna blend at every stage of your eyeshadow so that you have a really, really seamless gradient. You never wanna just plop a color down and then move on. You wanna make sure you're taking the time to blend out each shade that you apply so that they all mix really beautifully together. Just 
soften out those edges. I love this shade so much. I think it's so flattering. I do think burgundies and reds are such an underutilized eyeshadow color. I think they're universally flattering on so many different skin tones and eye colors. Um, so don't be afraid to play with them. I think they're beautiful. And then I'm gonna go back in with that brush that we had the Sienna on, and I'm just going to go over that as well. And if you're ever blending eyeshadow, it always makes it easier if you go in with a tiny bit of the shade that you previously applied that's a little bit lighter, and it just really helps blend out all of the rest of the deeper shades. Okay, so now I think I wanna go in with a shimmer on the lid. Um, I was gonna keep this look all matte, but I'm kind of feeling like going with a shimmer. So I'm gonna take this fairy shade here. It's like this really beautiful gold, and I like that it's not too yellow, but it's still definitely gold. Some golds are either like a yellow antique kind of gold that I think is a little bit too brassy, and some are too pinky, like a rose gold, and I like that this is just like a really great, true champagne gold. And I like to go in with shimmers on with my finger just to prevent fallout and also to get the highest impact because you're really pressing it in. Um, sometimes a brush can disperse the shimmer too much and I kind of want it concentrated right here. And I'm just going in on this inner portion of my lid and kind of taking it out there with my finger. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. Such a gorgeous shade. Anastasia does some really beautiful shimmers i think that they might be my favorite shimmers so okay we just put that fairy shade on it's really beautiful and now i'm just going to deepen up the outer v and then we'll go in with our liner so i'm going to take this smaller more tapered brush here and i'm going to go in with this cypress umber shade this beautiful deep brown and i'm just going to lightly tap my brush in and just go lower on the lid and drag it up into the outer V. I'm not taking this inward, I'm just taking this to the outer corner to intensify and add a little bit more depth there. And then I'm gonna go back in with this smaller brush that we had, if I can find it. I don't know what I just did with that brush. Oh, here it is, that I had that mulberry shade on. And I'm just going to go around those edges very slightly and very lightly and just mix that mulberry and cypress umber together. And then finally, I'm going back in with that MAC 217 and I'm just going to go ahead and blend out those edges. Okay, so now we're gonna do some liner. And I'm gonna go ahead and use I, I usually do black, but I think today I'm gonna do brown, and I've loved this Marc Jacobs, uh, what's it called? Highliner Matte Gel Eye Crayon, and this shade Earthquake. And this is just like this gorgeous, gorgeous brown, and I feel like it's so flattering, um, and a nice alternative to black for daytime. So I'll show you here. It's like still really deep, but it's got this beautiful smokiness to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this on my upper lash line. Okay, and I never like to just leave my pencil. I always like to have some sort of powder to smoke it out and blend it out. Sometimes I just feel like a pencil is too precise and I always like that more smoky blown out look. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little um, eyeliner brush. It's got this like tapered edge here. And I'm going to take a little bit of that Noir shade from the Soft Glam palette and I'm just gonna smoke out that eyeliner. Now I'm just taking that smaller brush that we have the Cypress Umber on to just blend that black into the brown. I'm gonna go ahead now and set the rest of my face and wipe my bake off. So the reason I like to set my entire face, I know some people don't set their face with powder. For me, the, the contour and bronzer and blush that I'm gonna go in with after um, 
really glides on easier and blends out better than if my face is still tacky. So I really like to have powders underneath powders so that everything can blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust my bake away using this Kat Von D number 25 brush. And I love the shape of this brush because it just fits so well into the contours underneath my eyes and just really gets in there. And sometimes with a brush like this size that's too fluffy, it doesn't really like dust away that powder and sweep it. And as you can see, we've got some eyeshadow fallout underneath our eyes here. So I just really wanna swiftly dust that away instead of dragging it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and dust away this bake. And to kick off that bake, you just wanna do quick little sweeping motions like this. See, all that eyeshadow fallout's gone. And I guess we didn't have enough powder on our nose here because there is a little bit of black. So the way I take care of that is I just take the side of my beauty blender that had some foundation on it, and I just go ahead and buff that out. And then I like to go back in over that with some translucent powder that I still have on the beauty sponge and just reset that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of my face with this um, powder from Laura Geller. It's called Baked Balance and Glow Illuminating Foundation in Golden Medium. And I love this because it reminds me of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish that I used to love like in high school i would always use that powder it's such a nice lightweight baked powder that still gives some luminescence to the skin it doesn't make it completely flat and matte and this um, is a cruelty free option that really reminds me of that so i'm going to take this big sigma f30 brush and i'm just going to dip that in i'm just going to set the rest of my face okay now we're gonna go in and finish up the eyes. So I'm gonna go in to the lower lash line with that same Marc Jacobs Earthquake Highliner Gel Crayon, and I'm just going to line my lower lash line. And we're gonna smoke this out, so don't worry about like being messy here. If it doesn't look perfect, that's fine. You just wanna get it, get it on there. And I think that this pencil is one of my favorites because it's so long wearing. Um, I feel like I can put it in the waterline if I want to and it never runs off and it just stays in place throughout the day, which for me is really important because I wear so much eye makeup because for I love eyeliner. I wear eyeliner every day. I know some people don't like heavy eye makeup and they go for a bolder lip, but I go mostly for nude lips and then I do a smokier, kind of more, deep eye. So now that we've got that eyeliner in place, I'm gonna take this Sigma Flat Definer E15 brush, and I love the shape of this because it just really gets underneath the lash line and helps you stamp um, product in. So I'm gonna go back into this Cypress Umber shade right here, and I'm just going to stamp that into my lower lash line. And as you can see, this is very messy and just very um, harsh right now. So we're gonna blend that out. Okay, so I'm gonna take this mulberry shade with this tiny little pencil brush and I'm just going to dip that in and smoke out that cypress umber that we placed over the pencil. And as I do this, I'm joining it up with the co colors that I have on the outer V so that that lower and upper shadow meets. And then I'm gonna take this um, kind of flat brush that we had the Sienna on, and I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of Sienna mixed with this burnt orange. And I'm just gonna blend all of that out. Okay, so as you can see, we've got sort of this smoky, grungy, dramatic, neutral, brown, kind of burgundy eye look going. So now I'm gonna go into my lower lash line and take this Marc Jacobs Highliner Crayon. This is a mini, and this is black. And I like to do black on the lower lash line, um, on the waterline, just because I feel like it really defines the eye and makes it pop with that black against the white of your eye. 
I'm also gonna go in and line my upper waterline, which is like the creepiest thing you'll ever see. I hate watching people line their upper waterline, so sorry. I love this soft glam palette. I think it's beautiful. So now we're gonna move on to the skin and finish up the rest of the look. So I'm gonna go in with some contour and I'm gonna use this Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. This is like one of my all time favorites and I know that now she creates singles of all of these shades. So if you don't wanna get the whole palette, you can definitely like, like for me I use this one predominantly so I can just buy this as a single now but I do have the palette so. Um, I'm gonna use that today and I'm gonna take this NARS Eda brush and I love this shape because it really helps you get into those hollows of the cheeks. I'm just gonna dip it into this middle shade and if you guys wanna know, it's called Shadow Play, this guy right here. I'm just gonna carve out my cheeks. And I like to do my contour before my bronzer so that I can go in with the bronzer and buff out the contour so it's not a harsh line. Then I'm gonna take it up onto my forehead. And then I'm gonna take it onto the sides of the nose. And you wanna go in with a light hand on the sides of your nose because it can quickly go wrong, like a little bit too extreme and then you just look like you've got two stripes on the sides of your nose and it's not cute. Okay. And then I'm gonna go in using this Benefit brush, and I like this because it's so fluffy, and it really just helps disperse bronzer all over the skin. And I'm gonna take this Hourglass bronzer. I cannot even tell you how much I love this bronzer. So this is called Radiant Bronze Light, and I know that they have a couple more shades um, that are lighter, cooler, warmer. I think this one's the darkest, but it's just got this gorgeous marbling, so there's like a highlight shade woven throughout a bronzer shade, so it just creates this gorgeous, glowy, luminous bronziness, and I think it's stunning. I think it's absolutely stunning. So I'm just gonna swirl. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this brush and swirl in the bronzer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bronze up the Z face. I love bronzer. I could like, probably live with just bronzer, lip balm, eyeliner, and mascara forever. Oh, I love this bronzer so much. It's so smooth on the skin. It's gorgeous. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and blush. And I love this blush lately. Um, it's by Marc Jacobs. It's their Air Blushes. This packaging is so pretty. Um, and it's got this like sort of wave effect so you could concentrate your brush here if you want a lighter blush Or you could concentrate it here. I just mix them all together, but I love it It's like this peachy pink shade and I really don't go for like super pink blushes anymore I do a lot of like peachy and corally blushes and a lot of nude blushes So this shade is like really beautiful um, If you just want something that's got a peachy pink healthy flush to it I'm just gonna swirl that on Oh, and this brush is a Morphe E34. And I like to concentrate my blush towards the outer um, sort of cheekbone upper area of my face so that it kind of gives that lifted effect versus concentrating it here, which gives you that chubbier, um, more childlike look, which can be beautiful in some face shapes, but for me, I feel like drawing the um, face upward is much more flattering. So I concentrate my blush up here. Okay, I think that's sufficient. And now I'm gonna go in with my highlight and this is a new favorite. So I'm gonna take this Anastasia A23 brush. It's like that perfect little shape to just feather it over the cheekbones. And this highlight, ugh, the Anastasia Amrezi highlight, it is so stunning. So it's got this gorgeous like wave effect to it. And a lot of light highlights look gray on my cheekbones. They translate very gray. Um, I don't know why that is. This, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's gonna be a little too light. No, it is like the most universally flattering champagne gold. I truly believe that if you are like four shades deeper than me or four shades lighter than me, this would work for you. I don't know what it is, but it just melts into the skin and looks beautiful. So I'm gonna swirl my brush in here, tap off the excess and place that on the cheekbone. Ugh. 
Do you see that glow? And I like to drag it in. I told you though, I don't mind looking greasy throughout the day, but I like to drag it in and just feather it on the apples of my cheeks. Ugh. I love this highlight so much. It's so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna take it down the center of the nose. Again, if you're greasy, you may not wanna do this, um, but I, I, I love a highlight everywhere. And then I'm gonna take it on my Cupid's bow. The chin and the center of the forehead. And then I'm gonna take my finger and just put it on my inner tear ducts and on my brow bone. So basically everywhere, all over my entire face. Um, I just love this highlight so much, I highly recommend it. Okay, now I'm gonna do the brows, and I think the brows are really boring to watch, and this video is already like gonna be super long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now the brows are done, and we're gonna do the lashes. So I'm gonna go in and curl my lashes, And sometimes I do falsies, but not usually during the day. So today we're just gonna go with our natural lashes. But feel free to pop some falsies on if you want to. Sometimes it's easier for people, like I've been doing falsies long enough that I'm comfortable with them, that if I'm in a rush and I just wanna like quickly get my lashes dramatic and change my eye look, I will just pop some falsies on because it can be faster sometimes than building up mascara or like doing a full blown eyeshadow look. Sometimes lashes and skin can, you know, be the perfect look if you're in a hurry. So now I'm gonna go in. So this mascara is from a brand Ilia, which is a cleaner beauty brand at Sephora. And I do like the formula, but the wand, it's like a hard plastic wand. I can't explain it. it like, it's like stabby. And so when you get too close to your lash line to really comb through your lashes, it like pokes you. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this Stila Extreme Lash Mascara, huge Extreme Lash Mascara. I do like this mascara a lot. Um, I have a really hard time finding clean mascaras. That's the one thing that I still have yet to find, like anything I really like in the clean formula family, but this mascara does a beautiful job and it is cruelty free. So I'm just gonna coat my lashes. And I like to curl the wand up to really comb through each and every lash. Okay, and now I'm gonna do my lower lashes. And the eyes are done. I really love this look. It's dramatic, but it's still soft and it's with a neutral tone, so it's perfect for daytime if you do wanna go dramatic, but not um, like too heavy for day. So I'm loving this look. Now we're just gonna do the lips. And as you guys know, I have some liquid lipsticks that I launched and I'm gonna go with two nudes today. Um, I'm gonna go with George and Cameron. And this is my favorite combo. I like to go with George first to put that like deeper taupey nude down and then I like to do an ombre from the center of my lips out to kind of highlight the center of my lips and make them look poutier with Cameron, which is a, which is a light pale pink nude. So first I'm gonna line my lips. This is the Bite Beauty pencil in the shade 20. This is a great all-purpose nude, so if you just are looking for a pencil that will go with any lip color just to define your lips that's a little bit deeper and a little bit more um, nude than your lips, this Bite pencil in the shade 20 is a really great uh, investment because it's just one of those universal shades that's a little bit deeper than your lips. It's like a your lips but better color. So you can literally put any color over it and this is just gonna help create a border and define your lips. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips. So this is super pretty on its own, um, if you did wanna just go with a lip liner. But I'm gonna go in with George first. And now I'm gonna go over top with Cameron. I'm gonna give that a second to dry and then I'm gonna go in back in with the Bite Pencil 
to just help really mix those colors together in with the liner. Okay, so I'm gonna go fix my hair and I will be right back. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. I hope that you like it and I hope that you learned something new today or found some products that you might want to try. I hope that you check out the foundation. I, um, I'm really, really excited to finally be able to share it with you. I've been working on it for so many months and just having it out there and being able to show you how it looks on my skin and share it with you is awesome. So yeah, I know that this video was super casual and laid back. Um, we're just sitting here in my room and I have no lights currently. I'm just using the natural light coming in. So if you do want to see, you know, a more stepped up quality video, I can definitely do that for you. I can definitely incorporate backdrops. I can incorporate studio lighting. Um, or if you just prefer these casual chit chat get ready with me's, let me know. Um, I know that as I'm getting back into this, I will have a little growing period of just figuring out the right setup. So please be patient with me and let me know your feedback so that I can create the types of videos that you guys want to see. So thank you guys so much for getting ready with me. It was really fun. I felt like I was just sitting here with my friends chatting with you and I'm so excited to be back. So have a great rest of your day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.